Hi, I'm John Seelock with Westfield Patch. We're here today with Sean Carroll of uh, Keller Williams Realty, the Westfield team, to discuss uh, the real estate market here in Westfield and the surrounding area for the past year and upcoming here in 2011. Sean, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure, John. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, Sean, to start, can you give me a summary of how the market looks for this area in this past year, in 2010? Well, 2010 was an interesting year, John, because there was a lot of factors affecting the market that we'd never seen before. One of those was the first time home buyer tax credit, which was an unprecedented government action to give buyers an incentive to buy, which really drove up sales in 2010, especially in a two month period in June and July. We saw more sales in June and July than we saw any other months of the year. So that really generated a lot of sales in Westfield and the surrounding areas. Overall, the transactions for 2010 were down about 10% from 2009. But those figures are a little bit deceptive because if you look at the numbers, it was not a consistent downward trend at all. What we saw was at the beginning of the year a lull, a spike in the middle of the year, and then a downward trend again at the end of the year after the home buyer tax credit expired. So the good news is, is that there's still a lot of transactions. The bad news, if there is any, is that the market was quite volatile and that depending upon when you bought or when you sold, prices could have been up down, it could have been a buyer's market or a seller's market, it was all about timing. What drives this market here in Westfield and the surrounding areas is that the demand will stay strong because we have excellent schools, we have access to transportation. So unlike other areas of the country where there was lots of real estate speculation, our area has remained a pretty healthy market and it's fairly balanced between buyer and seller right now. So that's, that I believe is a good sign going forward. With the uh, tax credit from last year, what price points were most impacted with sales on that? Well, this is interesting because when I looked at the numbers, what I was expecting to find was a, a very sharp spike in the lower price ranges, thinking that first-time buyers would most likely be in the sub-$600,000 category for Westfield uh, and surrounding areas. What I actually found was is that the price range that went up the most in terms of number of transactions, the number of transactions went up 40% in homes priced over a million dollars. And in fact, we had 12 sales in Westfield in 2010, over a million and a half dollars. So what I was expecting to find was what actually happened were two different things. My theories on this, and when I look deeper into the numbers, is that because the other factor we had was incredibly low interest rates, first time home buyers who may have purchased a home at seven or 800,000, because the interest rates were so low, combined with the tax credit, combined with a gradual increase in economic confidence, they may have stretched themselves to where they can afford more home at eight, nine hundred thousand or a million. We actually saw a decline in sales of homes under five hundred thousand. Prices went down about ten percent, number of transactions went down about twenty-five percent. So we saw an increase on the upside and a decrease on the downside. The other price points of five hundred to seven fifty and seven fifty to a million remained almost entirely flat year over year from two thousand nine to two thousand ten. Same number of transactions almost and same average and median sales prices. So it was interesting to see that. The other thing I, I think helped the upper price ranges is we did see, compared to 2009, a very pronounced recovery in the financial markets. So anyone that's heavily invested in the stock market or connected to anything in the financial industries saw an increase in their net worth, saw an increase in confidence, saw their bonuses go up, so I believe that spurred the upper end. But it was the opposite of what I expected to find, which was interesting. Now, we see that in the past, in past years where there's been more of a spike at the higher end the million, million plus homes? It has happened before and it, it really fluctuates and obviously it depends a lot on the overall economic conditions. What made this one specifically different was the fact that the interest rates were so low. So the income level needed to qualify for a higher priced home would have been a lot lower than it would have been say five or six years ago. Uh, five or six years ago when the market was at a peak, it didn't matter what price range you were at. In fact, there were plenty of sales in Westfield 2005, 2006, over $2 million, way more than there are now. So everything, they say uh, a rising tide lifts all boats, that's kind of what happened before. But this time it was a little bit different because we had this extra stimulus, I believe. Now the homes that were selling for a million, million and a half dollars in 2010, were those the, those the homes that were selling for $2 million uh, five years ago at the height of the real estate boom? Well, those homes definitely did see a decline in price. I wouldn't say it was as dramatic as a million dollars off of what they would have sold for five years ago. The average decline in price on the higher end from the peak of the market was anywhere between 15% and 30%. With the highest priced 
taking the bigger hit from what we saw at the peak. So for example, a home that maybe sold for $1,200,000 in 2010, at the peak of the market most likely would have sold for $1,600,000, $1,500,000, somewhere in that range, which brought more of those luxury homes into a price point that more people could afford, combined with the lower interest rates, combined with the tax incentive, really, I believe, drove that. But there, even if you paid full asking price for a home at $1.2 million today, compared to the peak of the market, you're still purchasing that home at approximately a 20% discount on average, which is, which is tremendous value, and I, I think people see that opportunity as a chance to buy into Westfield, get the home that they've always wanted at a much lower price than they ever could have before. Now, looking at 2010, with especially the people coming in with the tax credit, what type of demographics? Are we seeing people coming from other parts of New Jersey buying in Westfield or the other suburban parts of New Jersey? Or are we seeing people from the Hudson County Gold Coast of Jersey City, Hoboken? Or are we seeing Manhattan, Brooklyn, or outside of this metropolitan region? There's always a combination of all of those in the Westfield area, but what I found in particular this year was a, a lot of folks from that Gold Coast that you mentioned, Hoboken, Jersey City, that were either living in a condominium and owning uh, or renting and had been saving up, thought real estate was overpriced three or four years ago, understood the market was was over um, was definitely overvalued, waited, and, and what I'm finding is, is those folks, on the most part, for first-time buyers, had tremendously high down payments of amounts of $200,000 or more as a down payment in, in many cases. Now, some of those was as a result of income. Some of that was as a result of a lot of parents gift their kids first-time home buyer down payment money. But that that was tremendously different from five years ago, where the first-time home buyer was on average putting down less than five percent. So I saw, and most of those people were coming from the Hoboken, Jersey City area. Not so much, not as much Manhattan. Some outer boroughs. I definitely saw personally some clients from the Brooklyn area that were renting work in Manhattan and wanted a more suburban environment. So I'd say this in 2010, the largest concentration was definitely the Hoboken, Jersey City area, with, with a close second being the outer boroughs. And that's interesting. I remember a couple of years ago, realtors and elected officials in the Hoboken, Jersey City area kept talking about how more couples were staying in Hoboken, Jersey City to raise their family in those two cities or going into some of the upper Hudson County, Union City, West New York towns mm -hmm. and stay, wanting to stay there, more child-friendly atmosphere in those communities. Are we now seeing that shift back to Westfield or did that never change and it was just the hype coming out of Hoboken, Jersey City? Well, John, I think there's definitely a portion of that demographic that enjoys the urban lifestyle, enjoys the high-rise lifestyle and the amenities that come with it. So I do believe that what they were saying is accurate and that more people did want to stay. However, I do believe there's still always been and always will be a strong demand for people that want the suburban lifestyle. And so while I'm sure some of that was marketing campaign on their part, I think there is some validity to it. But it really depends on the individual. And the other thing I found is the age demographic. The younger buyer, by younger I mean what we're calling the millennials or gener generation Y. For those folks, say, under the age of 30, under the age of 28, more of them are finding value in, st in staying in the urban lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that most of the first-time buyers in Westfield fell into that generation X category. Low 30s, mid 30s, upper 30s. Those were the folks I found most commonly purchasing in Westfield. And I will say something else that was interesting in that for the first time in my career, I saw people that were first that ended up being first-time buyers in Westfield also actively looking in Hoboken and Jersey City, which are two entirely different lifestyles. And that was puzzling to me because to me, if you're looking for a backyard and all the things with it versus a high-rise building, they're really night and day. But this was, I saw more than one case where they were actively considering both, and what was the determining factor was where was the best value. And so when we found something that met their criteria that they believed was the best value, they jumped on it. And in some cases it was Westfield, and in some cases they, they elected to stay in that Hoboken, Jersey City area, whether or not they had children, so it was interesting. Now when you're talking about the Westfield versus Hoboken, Jersey City, obviously you're saying we are talking two different lifestyles, suburban versus urban. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the condo developers in the Gold Coast are putting in the child-friendly rooms, the fresh direct rooms, the rooftop decks, pools, dog runs. Donald Trump put in a rain simulator into a building in Jersey City. How do you market Westfield 
and obviously the parks and the schools and the amenities that are not right outside your door that you'd have in a condo in Jersey City. How do you market when you're looking at someone who is comparing Hoboken and Westfield? Well, I think the biggest differences end up selling Westfield on itself in that if the person is looking for a yard, there are some people that really have always dreamed about having a backyard and they like looking out onto their property and seeing that they own something that is a piece of a community. And I think that that's one selling point, especially when we're looking at the price points, a lot of uh, similar price points, if you look at condo versus uh, single family home, that's one big, you know, big selling point, is if you have dogs, you want to have them run the yard, you have two and three kids, it gives them more places to play. Child family uh, friendly rooms are great, but it's still not the same as a yard. The other thing is, is that a walking community. People like to walk and feel a part of a community that's not only a city environment, but something that is a combination of parks, a combination of a downtown area, and that's what Westfield really has is space compared to an urban, li urban lifestyle. The pace is a little bit slower too, I might add, and that when you're moving into a suburban environment, you have, there are periods of the day where traffic dies down completely and you feel like it's a quiet community. However, during certain parts of the day, it does have that hustle and bustle, especially on the weekends downtown. There's a ton of people shopping, a ton of people going out to eat. But if you want that break from the noise, if you will, and that break from that, that fast pace, Westfield truly offers that. And probably the biggest thing that my clients tell me why they end up choosing Westfield or a community like it over a more urban setting and living in the city is the school system and, they, and the trust that they have and the track record that they have with the Westfield school system. Yes, the taxes are, are, they are what they are, but people feel like for those tax dollars they're getting a tremendous return both in reputation of school system and quality of education. And that's really something that I think sells itself but that's what clients tell me when they end up choosing Westfield is probably their determining factor, whether or not they have kids, because they believe that a school system is one of the number one reasons that will help the resale of their property. So those are the biggest differences that I see. Now, one thing you talked about a little while ago was the Wall Street bonuses. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we are in bonus season now here in 2011 for the 2010 bonuses. Bonuses have been rebounding over the past couple of years from the low about two, three years ago. What impact are the this round of bonus is going to have on the Westfield market. I know in the uh, Manhattan market, real estate agents are almost giddy come bonus, Wall Street bonus time. Mm -hmm. Is that the same here? Uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's giddy. Uh, again, it depends on the price point. What, what I find is, and to answer to the first part of your question, is they do have an effect. And when we track the numbers, at the height of the economic crisis in the first quarter of 2009, what we saw was almost all sales activity, even in high quality suburban communities like Westfield came to a complete halt. Now, were bonuses the direct result of that? No, but that was the financial markets. And so and what we saw was a gradual improvement in 2009. I believe we'll see another gradual improvement in 2010 in terms of first quarter. The biggest impact that I've heard from my clients in terms of their bonuses, whether it be Wall Street or just a, a typical Manhattan firm, is what price level they're going to purchase in. Or we'll be looking at homes in the fourth quarter with the idea that when I get my bonus, I'll be able to make an offer. So the bonuses I see do push the decision. They may, I, what I don't think you're going to see is all of a sudden people purchasing piles and piles and piles of expensive property in Westfield because of the bonuses. That, that I don't see. Could it happen? Absolutely. But I think that's the big difference between here and Manhattan is we don't see that kind of flurry. But what we will see is if someone's on the fence between buying the million dollar house and the $700,000 house, if they get a $100,000 bonus, they're most likely going to go to that million dollar house. So it'd be interesting to see when we're talking a year from now, when we're looking at that upper price point, when did those sales occur? And, and if they're in the first quarter, it's a pretty good bet that bonuses were tied into that. Now looking ahead to 2011, what are, we, what are you seeing what trends can we expect? What can we expect to see just in the Westfield market? Uh, no one has a crystal ball, but my best, I look at the numbers, I look at the patterns, and I look at the factors that drive supply and demand. I believe that regardless of what happens with the economy, Westfield will always outperform a lot of its peers. So if the market is down 20%, Westfield may only be down 10%. If the market overall in this area is up 10%, Westfield might be up 20%. I believe we're always going to outperform, so that's point number one. In terms of what's actually going to happen, we have to really keep an eye on supply and demand. 
And right now we have a balance of about six to seven months supply, which means that if no other homes came on the market today, based on how many sales are happening every month, it should take between six and seven months to sell all of them. That's what economists would call a balanced market, neither buyer nor seller. What I believe is, is that we're, because I saw a lot of listings that were withdrawn or expired in December, more so than normal in December, I believe more, more folks took their homes off the market in December we brought the inventory down to where we only have 113 homes on the market in Westfield. At the peak in 2010, we had over 230 homes on the market. So the key is going to be, do they come back on the market or do they stay off the market? If a lot of those folks come back on the market, I believe in the short term, in the first quarter, we might see slight declines in transactions, slight declines in price. The number one factor, though, that neither I nor anybody can predict is what's going to happen with these interest rates. Right now, they're under 5% still. It's unbelievable that about two, three months ago, you could get a 30-year mortgage if you had good credit and qualified for close to 4% fixed rate for 30 years. It's just under 5% now. If we stay under 5% and money is, is that inexpensive to borrow, I believe sales are going to remain strong and steady. I believe we're going to stay balanced. I don't see a spike in activity. I don't see a dramatic decline. The term that's used a lot is bouncing along the bottom. I believe just like we saw in 2010, we're likely going to see the same type of behavior. I don't know that we'll have another tax credit, but I believe we'll see periods of increase, most likely in the spring months, where inventory comes down and buyers come up, and then I believe the balance will come back. If unemployment dramatically improves, more people get work, and a lot of the folks in this area that are in the financial industry or other industries, as they start to get hired more, I believe prices will start to rise. So to sum it all up, 2011, I, I see it remaining very steady, healthy market, good balance between buyer and seller, with the one caveat being if interest rates go up, say, from 5% to 7%, that could have a tremendously negative impact on transactions, because here's what happens. For every 1% that the interest rate rises or falls, it affects purchasing power by about 9%. So that means if I can afford today a $600,000 house and the rates go up 2%, that's about 18% difference. It's a difference between a $600,000 house and a $725,000 house. That has a tremendous impact. So those are the things I'm keeping an eye on. My gut tells me right now, pretty steady. We'll be having a similar conversation a year from now. Now, the homes that were taken off the market at the end of in December, November 2010, were those taken off primarily because it was the end of the year, holiday season, less real estate activity, or those people who were rethinking their whole decision to sell? A uh, combination of both. Every December, homes that are listed, say from Thanksgiving to the Christmas season, mm -hmm. a good number of them always come off the market temporarily and then come back on after the Super Bowl, is the cliche I always like to use. And usually after Super Bowl Sunday, that's when our real estate market really seems to pick up in terms of listings and sales. Mm -hmm. However, this year what I noticed is compared to 2009, is that while the overall number of expireds and withdrawns were down in 2010 for the year, they were, they were up from December of 10 to 2009. So I believe more people were rethinking because in the middle of the year when the sales were very, very brisk, and by the way, the absorption rate or the, the month supply was at three to four months in June which meant incredibly hot seller's market. So I think what happened is, and I observed this too from the behavior in the market, so-and-so listed their house in June, sold it in three days for more than they ever thought they'd get. Well, that word spreads through town, and more people start to list because, hey, maybe the market's getting better. And I think a lot of those folks, as you mentioned, towards the end of the year said, you know what, maybe we're not going to get that price that we thought we were going to get. Let's just hold off and see what happens in the spring. And a lot of people always say to me, let's see what happens in the spring, because as I mentioned, spring has the reputation of being, being more healthy. So I think it's a combination of both, but I think more, that more so this year than last, as you mentioned, people reconsidered or just felt, you know what, things have cooled off. We don't really need to move right now. Let's wait. And just looking for 2011, what price point do you see being the hottest in Westfield? If the interest rates stay where they are, I think the upper end of the range in Westfield is still going to remain very strong because buyers, if, if I'm a buyer and I can afford a $700,000 house when for the same monthly payment as what used to be a $500,000 house, 
most buyers are going to want to explore that as long as it doesn't affect their monthly payment or their financial position. So if the interest rates stay where they are, I think we'll see similar activity based on what we saw in 2009 because the lower end, which maybe were the less pricey locations, the smaller homes or the homes that needed a lot more work, there was less people interested in those because for the same monthly payment that used to be, they could upgrade. Now, if the interest rates rise, I think that's, that's going to have a negative impact on pricing across the board. Not dramatic, but negative enough that now somebody that still sees opportunity to buy a home now or wants to buy a home now because of a lifestyle choice and, and a combination of value, as the interest rates rise, that squeezes their buying power and it's going to shift them back towards the lower ranges. So you might see more in that sub 600 again because they still want to buy into Westfield, but instead of stretching to that upper range now, well, I still want to buy. It's still a good time to buy, so let's look at some lower priced homes. So it really is going to hinge on the interest rates. If they stay the same, again, I think we're having a similar conversation a year from now. And one last question is, obviously we're talking a lot about the higher end, the high six figures, low seven figure homes. For the people in the 500 and below market in Westfield, what, you know, what is the forecast looking ahead? Those homes, while there was less of them sold in 2010, and their average price went down, that doesn't mean everybody's price went down. If, your home, if you're watching this and your home is valued in that range, and there's a lot of homes in Westfield, a lot of great homes in Westfield for 500000 450000 some great neighborhoods. If you're, if you're in that price range, what that means is, is that uh, while you may not have seen the number of transactions in that range, those homes sell incredibly fast in towns like Westfield. And I had a number of buyers in 2010 that were looking in that 400 to 500 because five years ago, those 450 and 500s were 650 and 700s. So they sell so fast. If they're priced appropriately, if you have a $500,000 house and your real estate agent comes in and you talk about it and determine that you should probably be between 475 and 500, if you list in that range and, and you follow the market's advice, you're going to sell probably within 30 days, maybe at most 60 days and oftentimes with multiple offers. And the reason for the multiple offers is the inventory of that range is a lot smaller. So with less inventory, as we talked about, drives demand. So over, over the long haul, uh, those homes are gonna come back up in price again if they've gone down at all. So that's the good news. You know, the, the, the unfortunate news is if you purchased that home less than three or four years ago, uh, ago say you bought it for 2005 or later, chances are you're either gonna be flat or slightly below what you paid for it. And that's across the board. That's not just the lower end. But those homes do sell fast. And if the key is, is uh, a phrase I hear a lot is it's a price war and a beauty contest at the same time. And that's especially true at the lower end of the market, even more than the higher end. Because if you do those things well, if you have your home ready to show, if it's accessible, if it's well, well decorated or prepared well or staged and priced well, you will sell extremely fast. And that was even the case in the worst of the economic conditions. And I had numerous buyers who kept saying to me, I thought it was a buyer's market. How come there's always two or three offers on these homes? And that's what's happening in the lower range. So it puts the seller in control. That's the good news. Sounds good. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, John. Thanks very much.